Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use Psalm 80. And some of the reason for that, as we kick off this Advent season, is that uh, people have asked me or told me that they've tried reading the Bible, starting with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and that they have so much difficulty doing that. And I told them that one of the issues um, when you're, you know, reading the Old Testament in particular is that you have to have in mind a certain amount of history. And the psalm today brings that out a little bit, uh, but it certainly sets us up uh, for the Advent season, which is, you know, what we're doing today. So, at least initially, I'm going to do a little bit of verse by verse because there are so many historical references that we need to understand to understand what the psalmist is trying to say. So the psalm starts with an interesting title for God. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. This might be one of the only times in, in the Bible that God is called the shepherd of Israel. And we think of what did the shepherd do? The shepherd, you know, led the sheep. The shepherd guarded the sheep. You know, the shepherd took care of them. And so the psalmist understands God in that role, the shepherd of Israel. And then the next part of that verse, you who led Joseph like a flock. Well, here's our first one. We all know Joseph in the Old Testament. He's one of Jacob's sons, uh, but he you know, doesn't get, let's say, a piece of territory named after him. So Joseph sort of stands for all the people of Israel. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who enthroned upon the cherubim shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Here we have a bunch of stuff going on. Ephraim and Manasseh were Joseph's two sons, and Benjamin was one of Jacob's sons, so again, we have a reference uh, to the people of Israel, but especially uh, the northern kingdom. We'll, we'll get more to that. And then saying, enthroned upon the cherubim, uh, the cherubim, these angelic uh, creatures, were on the Ark of the Covenant. Um, when Isaiah has his call, you know, the cherubim are there. And so, you know, God is seen, shepherd of Israel certainly, but above everybody and everything enthroned upon the cherubim. And then it goes on with a very Advent expression. Stir up your might and come in to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. And so we have you know, the main theme of Advent here. Stir up your might, stir up your power, and come to save us. In the Old Testament, uh, when they talk about being saved, it's, it's significantly different than how we use it today. For the people of Israel, being saved meant a return of their political power and their safety as a nation. And given the location of Israel, that was a rare commodity for them. Uh, they were between Egypt and the powers of Mesopotamia. And so armies are constantly going back and forth and having battles. And the people of Israel are kind of uh, defenseless against so much of this. And so they call on God. You know, let your face shine that we may be saved. They're asking God's face shining is a, is a symbol of God's presence. And when the face shines, it's because of good things. It's because of, of um, God's positive feeling, God's faithfulness to the people of Israel. That particular verse we'll hear two more times. Verse 4, O Lord God of hosts, and in this case hosts pretty much stands for armies, O oh Lord God of, you know, heavenly armies, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? Now we get to sort of the problem, what's going on. God is angry with the people's prayers from the psalmist's point of view. You know, God is kind of the cause of all their trouble. You have fed them with the bread of tears 
and given them tears to drink in full measure. Obviously, you know, this is telling us the people's sorrow, that they are crying because things are so bad, and that they're crying a lot, and that this is, you know, what they have, all these tears to drink in full measure. And then in verse 6, you make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. So, you know, the problem. Uh, Israel's neighbors are mocking them, you know, laughing at them. You know, maybe saying, you people are, are so weak and so pitiful. You know, and, and they're kind of the laughing stock of, of their neighbors. And then verse 7, we've heard it before. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. And so we have again the concept, the people asking God to come, save us. Um, it's interesting because the Hebrew word that they translate as restore us in verse 3, 7, and we'll see it again in verse 19, it actually, the Hebrew word actually means make us turn. The people are saying, God, please make us turn to you so that we will be saved, so that we will be safe, so that we can live in peace and harmony. And then uh, verse 17, but let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. This is probably a reference to the king of Israel because they prayed for the king of Israel. Many of the Psalms have to deal with the people praying for the king of Israel because if they have a good, wise king, obviously that bodes well for all the people of Israel. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. So here we have kind of a promise, and it's kind of a, a typical thing with the psalms like this. The, um, the people, you know, they start out with a statement of faith. You know, give ear, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph. You know, they know their relationship with God. And then the second part that we read, it's, you know, God is the cause of their problems. And then we get to the last part again, 17 through 19, and we have, and it's so common in the Psalms, a promise that, you know, we will be faithful, we will be with you um, if, if you do these things for us, if you, if you make us safe again. We will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call in your name. So they promise that they will never again turn their backs on God. And then the familiar verse 19. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. We see in so many of the Psalms, in fact, it's the largest number of Psalms that are called laments or complaints. Um, they're understanding that God is on their side and yet God who is faithful to them, faithful to their covenant, bad things still happen. And isn't that the same with us today? It could be any number of things. You know, in the middle of COVID, we can talk about that. Uh, we can talk, uh, talk about the flu epidemic of, you know, 1918 and all the lives that that took. And we can go through and talk about all the bad things that, that happened. We think about the Cold War. We think about you know, wars, we think about terrorism, and it's as if, like with the people of Israel, we never have that point in, we never have that point in time where everything is safe and well and good, and we can, in a sense, sort of sit back. You know, that ourselves also um, calling on God to kind of straighten things out in the world so we don't have to worry about these things. And we think about, you know, again, this Advent season, a time of waiting, uh, waiting for the coming of the Messiah. Um, the Messiah came once with Jesus, and in the psalm when they say, let your face shine that we may be saved, for us Christians, God's face is shining in Jesus' presence. 
And yet that, that presence doesn't change bad things from happening. The problem is, is just as old as time itself probably. You know, why do bad things happen to good people? And we don't even have to think that we have a God who's rewarding good people or watching out for good people. Uh, people of all time have understood that, that just bad things happen. It's just life. It's just what it means to be a human. The book of Job is 42 chapters discussing this very thing. And the book of Job ends where we might expect that there's no answer. Bad things happen. Bad things have always happened. Um, and we live in that time where we are waiting also for the coming of the Messiah, where we are waiting for that person to make the crooked straight, uh, to lift up valleys and to bring mountains low. We are waiting for that person. We are waiting for that time when God returns and, and all is made right. This Advent season, that's, that's what we're about. It's a time of waiting. You know, as a congregation, as the Christian church, we're waiting for, for COVID to be over. And there might be a light at the end of the tunnel, but it's an awfully long tunnel still at this point. But we are waiting. And this first Sunday of Advent, the psalmist reminds us, and if we had read the first lesson from Isaiah, you would see that Isaiah reminds us as well that the time is coming and we are waiting for that time. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.